Sure, please. Thank you, Francis. Going to the second submission, to the, going to the second sub point, Ranoff's time must compensate the economic losses that Ranoff's time has caused to our revenue. Under Article 43 of IHR, all WHO member in the health master context are prohibited to do the travel restriction. And thus, Ranoff's time must compensate of 130 million euro as a form of responsibility to Akrepuya because this is, in, is not in compliance with the Article 15 of IHR and thus under Article 31 in responsibility of states for internationally won for act where Ranoff Stoy has a responsibility to give a reparation as the result of the travel restriction that affect an economic losses of Akrepuya and thus Apropia require the compensation based on the International Wong Fu Act that covers any financially assembled damage, including loss of profits, both material and non-material that went to the GDPs of Apropia years. Your Excellencies, allow me to define what is International Wong Fu Act. International Wong Fu Act is every act by state which is wrongful under some primary rule of international law and imposes international responsibility of the state. And moreover, in the Article 2 of the draft Internationally Wongful Act, where element of Internationally Wongful Act itself is one attribute to the state international law, which is this Wongful Act is did by run of style country. And the second, the element is constituted as the branch of an international obligation of the state, where run of style breach the WHO Constitution and Declaration of Human Rights, also the ICCPR, which all the member, which Run of style is all the member of this obligation to honor and deem those agreements or sources that that characterize in Article Three of International Law. Again, your excellencies. Uh, again, uh, where is the position of the WHO Constitution in the source of international law? Can you explain more? So that's why when you say that the run of style already against the WHO Constitution because it is. Uh, part of the source of international law. Can you elaborate more what is the position of the WHO constitution under the international law as the source of international law? Mm -hmm. so. Yes, your excellencies, I understand your concern. Since, w, since WHO constitution is in the hard law of sources of international law, then it is the, this is the absolute sources that cannot be uh, cannot be injured of the of each member itself your excellencies this uh, the WHO constitution is is um WHO constitution is um make an ob uh, make an obligation and liability of each member to unearth and deem this regulation your since the WHO constitution is a hard law Is it clear, your excellencies? Yes. Yes, your excellencies. Moving to the second submission. This second submission claim is regarding runoff style violent international law by failing to hand over Ms. Kemba Verman, Apropuya's authorities. Your excellencies, may I bring on the table two arguments. The first runoff style action to accept Ms. Verman is indeed violating international law. And the second, Ms. Kemba Vermont is not fit with the criteria to be called as asylum or refugee seeker. If you don't want to the structure, I could proceed the second submission. Sure, please. This issue, this issue appear when there is one of the employee in the NBL named Ms. Kemba Vermont reported about the cases of the JFIT acting with her fake social media. So that as a bridge uh, of this non discussed argument and appropriate laboratory, she has been a suspect as a consequence of it. And hence, Ms. Roman visited Ranovsky's consular to grant it an asylum, and Ranovsky hold her and refused to hand over Ms. Roman to the appropriate authorities. Thus, this is the pioneer why Ranovsky violated international law by not surrender Ms. Roman. Your Excellencies, Ms. Kemba Furman is the fugitive from justice of Akrepuya, and there is no 
good faith and reciprocity by Ranoff's Toyo to surrender her. Because as known, Miss Roman with her own free will and consciousness, she has committed her domestic law by bound the non-disclosure agreement in the NDA. NBL itself is a national bioresearch laboratory that state owned and state run that located in Segura province by Akrapuya. And all employees agree as a condition of employment that they will not disclose or default any information in the NBL. And the violation of this agreement is undertaking of possible prosecution. Thus, Apropia has formally asked for Ms. Forman extradition with the procedure as how international law regulated. And as now, there is no rule of international law which prevents that from, from extradition their citizen from the other country. And in many practice states, such in national legislation provides for the possibility of extradition without pre-existing the agreement itself. And may I bring the two cases uh, that in compliance with these cases, your excellencies. The first, there's Ms. Mr. Safarkar case, which is the Britain Indian nationality that uh, tried escape from the escape from the justice of Britain to the French territory. And uh, the court ordered France to hand over Mr. Safarkar to the Britain because the because he is clearly the fugitive from Britain justice, your excellencies. And the second case is there's Maria Pauline's case who is committed 1.7 trillion rupiah bank burglary in Indonesia and she escaped from Indonesia to Serbia and got extradition because Serbia consider Miss Ma Mrs. Maria is clearly fugitive from Indonesia's justice, your excellencies. Thus, that is why Ranoff Style has to do the reciprocity and good faith to Apropia by handover Ms. Furman Bitsu. Because Ms. Furman is not a, an asylum or refugee that could be protected by the other country, but clearly those principles not shown by Ranoff Style, your excellencies. And precisely uh, in action, in action 2018. Yes, your excellencies. So, can you explain more? Uh, can you explain more on what is the step practice on current uh, case for Ms. Mrs. Ferment, and where can it be found, and what is the national uh, law or any regulations that proceed uh, for uh, Mrs. Ferment's process in Apropia itself, if there is no international law engaged in this case. Yes, your excellencies, I understand your concern. Since state practice, it could be a customary international law that, uh, such as in the case that I emphasized before, and also uh, the returning of the fugitive, the fugitive from other country to their origin country is related to the Article 33, Paragraph 2 of the 1951 Convention where under the provision a state might be permitted to export or return a refugee or asylum seeker to a country where they face a prosecution on grounds of overriding reasons of national of national security and public safety or excellencies. Okay, so can a provision of a treaty become a customary international law in this case? Uh, if so, is if so, if it can, uh, so what is required for a norm of a treaty to become a customary international law that involve for this case? Yes, Your Excellency, since the handover of the fugitive of the origin state, uh, it could be handover from the receiving state, it uh, could be uh, a customary international law where many practice of states uh, are uh, provides for the possibility of extradition without pre-existing the agreement itself. And uh, because Ranoff Stayo, uh, because Apropulia has asked Ranoff Stayo and uh, give a public statement to Ranoff Stayo Consulate to handle from his form on 8 June 2019, thus Ranoff Stayo has responsibility to give and and over Ms. Roman to the appropriate justice to our sons because she's, uh, she's a fugitive that uh, have 
assas that have has been a suspect of the committed uh, common crime in appropriate justice, your excellencies. May I continue, your excellencies? Sure, please. Your excellencies, asylum in the premises of a diplomatic mission is contradicts with based on Article 55, Paragraph 1 of VCCR, where ascending state, which is run of style, ought to enjoy the privilege and immunities so that has to respect the law and regulation in the receiving state, which is appropriate. So run of style as ascending state also have a duty not to interfere the internal the internal affairs of the receiving state. And this trend in the paragraph two stipulates the consular premises shall not be used with incompatible manner of the exercise of consular functions, such as granting an asylum to the person themselves. Because in the article three of CCCR, it states that the function of diplomatic mission is only representing, representing, protecting, negotiation, ascertaining, and promoting friendly relations. And thus, Ranoff Stay clearly violate this international agreement and therefore should expel Ms. Roman to the appropriate because she's not fit with the criteria to be called as a, as a refugee or asylum seeker that should be protected by the other country or excellencies. And furthermore, uh, the, uh, the, def the definition of an asylum and refugee seeker is not fit with the Ms. Roman because refugee is always is a person owing to well-founded fear of being prosecuted for reason of race, religion, and nationality. And Ms. Roman is not going to prosecute of their of that inhuman reason, your excellencies, because we conclude Ms. Roman is only taking advantage to go to run of as consular while she is the clearly fugitive from appropriate justice. Thus, to summarize the first and the second submission. Apropia respectfully, respectfully require the court to declare that Ranoff style violate international law by applying anti regulation, so must compensate of the resulting economic crisis. And furthermore, Ranoff style also violate international law by refusing to hand over Ms. Furman to the appropriate other regions because she's not fit with the criteria to be called as asylum or refugee seeker that would be protected by the other country or excellencies. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mrs. Faya. I call the second agent of the applicant to uh, deliver a uh, two submission left. So, Mrs. Ayu, time is yours. Very good afternoon, Your Excellencies, Mr. President and the judges, Mr. Arrivedia Dinata and Ms. Sheila, and the agent of the Democratic State of Pranav Tayu. My name is Ayu Angraini. And I have the honor to appearing before this court, appealing on the behalf of applicant, the United States of Apropia, representing the case concerning Japit 18 pandemic. Your Excellencies, I will be delivering the third submission regarding to the court may not exercise jurisdiction over run of ties the claim concerning the Minton Airways aircraft. And for the fourth submission regarding to even if the court were to exercise jurisdiction, Apropria did not violate international law by shooting down the aircraft. Your Excellencies, with your permission, may I please the court. Your Excellencies, I will begin from our third submission. In this submission, I will be dealing with two main points. Firstly, about the court may not exercise jurisdiction over run of ties and the claim based on the Apropria's declaration of reservation of reservation of Apropria and Ranov Sayu, 7 January 2002 and 10 March 2003. And for the second main point, mm -hmm. the maintain airways dispute is the domestic jurisdiction of the United Republic of Apropria. Your Excellencies, if you don't mind with this structure, I will continue with the problem. The problem started in the early morning of 26, 2018, when a maintain airways aircraft a crash into a territory in Apropia, and maintain airways aircraft is a low cost charter airline privately owned by Apropia nationality. And this aircraft was also registered in Apropia authorities, your references. And as the result, that the maintain airways aircraft are shooting down by the military activity, military authorities of Apropia 
in order to prevent a tragedy regarding uh, from this surveillance of the FOGs attack, as known that FOGs, uh, international or terrorist organization since 2016, your excellencies. And the mentioned US aircraft was flying illegally near the capital city of Apreplia. And as the result, the mentioned US aircraft was shot down and killed both of the passengers inside the aircraft, known as Mrs. Kemba Furman and Mrs. C as the pilot. And on 16 July 2018, an FIA notified the court about the wish to file a counterclaim, asserting that the shoot down of the maintenance airways aircraft that take action by APRA Puglia are violated international law. And APRA Puglia, on the two days later, not its intention to the court to declare and adjust that the court may not exercise jurisdiction over an FIA counterclaim concerning the maintenance airways aircraft. And here, to prove that the International Court of Justice has no jurisdiction over the run of time contact claim concerning the maintenance airways aircraft. First, the court may not exercise jurisdiction over run of time contact claim based on the Apreplia's declaration dissertation on the declaration of Apreplia and run of time, 7 January 2002 and 10 March 2003. Your Excellencies, as said before, that in their contract claim, an Aftayo claim about the court has jurisdiction over the shooting down the maintenance airways aircraft. But definitely, in this case, Ran Aftayo do not have any interest, and International Court of Justice also has no jurisdiction over this contract claim. And the Excuse court me. has no jurisdiction. Yes, Your Excellency. Um, what are the principal? Uh, what are the principal international docu documents concerning about the state's responsibility? Is there any like universal uh, agreement on how we create a state, uh, state responsibility for this kind of cases? Yes, Your Excellency, I understand your concern regarding to the state responsibility is linked to the international wrongful acts under international law, Your Excellency. And here, based on this principle that the international wrongful acts, a state that entails its international responsibility referred to above has been applied in PCAG. And this kind of internationally wrongful acts regarding to the responsibility of a state are uh, already already judged and already judged and declared by the state in several cases and by the ICG in content contentious cases also your excellencies this is not only judged by the ICG regarding to the principle of the state responsibility but by the all tribal tribunals tribunals also use this principle in order to judge and to adjust uh, some cases your excellencies and the ICG has also affirmed that the principle of in their advisory opinions. First, there must be an internationally wrongful act and uh, just like a violation of international law. And secondly, such a violation results in international responsibility, your excellencies. May I continue, your excellencies? So what are the elements of an internationally wrongful act? Of for the state itself. Then. Yes, your excellency. Regarding to the international wrong acts are regulated in the adoption of the draft article of the responsibility of state for international wrongful acts in the draft by the International Law Commissions or ILC in August 2001. And the draft articles are a combination of codification and progressive development. And they have been already been cited in the internationally International Court of Justice in the ICJ cited an aircraft and an earlier draft text of the articles of the Gabi Kopo Negemers Neg project or Changers of Slovakia in IC ICJ reports 1977, Your Excellency. So this principle of state responsibility regarding to the international wrongful acts already uh, regulate and happen in some cases and used for the advisory opinions in the ICG cases. Your Excellency, may I continue, Your Excellency? Yes, please. Thank you. 
However, appropriately and of Tayo has deposited the declaration on 7 January 2002 and 10 March 2003, but appropriately has a reservation to this declaration, Your Excellency. It stated in the Article 21D of the uh, Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties 1969, as stated that reservation that already bind of the of that can up that already ratifying and binding of the country are linked to the contracting state, your excellencies. And this also regarding to the principle of the Pacta Sarpanda, as stated in the Article 26 of the PCLT, your excellencies. And in this case, Apropia and Danopstayo has already binding this declaration and also the reservation. And there's no reason that the International Court of Justice has jurisdiction over this counter claim because there is, the run of Tayus has no any kind of interest regarding to this dispute and Apropia has already reservation this declaration, your excellencies. Moving to our second main points regarding to this dispute are the pure domestic jurisdiction of Apropia, your excellencies. Here, Apropia has their fully authority and has their fully sovereignty over their space regarding to the principle of state sovereignty and regarding to the principle of ter territorial principle, your excellencies. Here, the mentioned areas aircraft dispute are the domestic jurisdiction of Apropia considered to the Article 2, Paragraph 7, Charter of the United Nations. That regulate the domestic jurisdiction as said is the competence of a country to fully exercise its sovereignty without interference from other parties or countries, even though international law, your excellencies. And these provisions also expanded more in the like of nation of Article 15, Paragraph 8, and uh, elaborate more in the convention, Article 5 of the Convention for the Suppression of Unlawful Acts against the safety of civil aviation 1971, Your Excellency. And under these provisions that give the state uh, their fully authority over the, this airface. And in this case, Apropia, the maintenance areas aircraft are crushed into the territorial of Apropia. And regarding to the principle of the nationality uh, of the jurisdiction, the Passenger inside the maintenance airways aircraft are nationality of Apropia, Your Excellency. So the maintenance airways aircraft dispute is the pure domestic jurisdiction of Apropia, Your Excellency. And also uh, to strengthen that in their reservations, Apropia claim that this declaration shall not apply to any dispute concerning Apropia military activities or to any dispute with regard to matters which are essentially within the domestic jurisdiction of Apropia. And as what the appropriate government determined your essences in, in this case, based on the um, Prime, Minister, Prime Minister Haraka stated in 5 July 2018 that the maintenance airways aircraft are pure, purely the domestic jurisdiction of the United Republic appropriate your essences. And I will move to our fourth submission regarding to even if the court were to exercise jurisdiction, appropriately did not violate international law by shooting down the aircraft. Your Excellencies, here uh, we provide two main points to prove that even if the court were to exercise jurisdiction, appropriately did not violate international law by shooting down the aircraft. Firstly, appropriately did not violate international law by shooting down the aircraft because the state sovereignty that has this authority of Apropia and Apropia human rights under the UDHR offenses. And for the second point, Apropia complies to the international procedure on international civil aviation. As known that the maintenance airways aircraft was flying illegally in the Apropia capital city. And Apropia already showed the Regarding to the uh, regarding to the Apropia did not violate international law based on the state sovereignty of Apropia and Apropia human rights references. Here, based on the territorial principle that sovereignty appears in many provisions of international law. And this principle of the absolute and exclusive jurisdiction 
of a sovereign state within its national territory is unimpeachable, Your Excellency. Based on the Article 1 of Chicago Convention 1944, it stated that the, co the contracting state has their fully and has their fully uh, sovereignty over its space, Your Excellency. And based on the Article 5 of the fundamental rights, as stated, are not susceptible of being affected in many manner whatever, Your Excellency. And based on this principle that one sovereign state cannot exercise jurisdiction over another sovereign power. It is the basis of the act of state doctrine and sovereign immunity. Your Excellency. Mrs. Agent, I would like to ask you about what is the content of appropriate responsibility as a state with this position of this case? Like how, like what is what is the tangible responsibility of Apropria as a state to discover this issue and to uncover this issue itself? Yeah, yes, Your Excellency, I understand your question. In this case, Apropria has no kind of responsibility because Apropria did not fit to the International Wrongful X criteria, Your Excellency, because the maintain. Uh, so, so what are the criteria or the elements that needs to be fulfilled by Apropia to do the international wrongful act? Yes, Your Excellency, I understand your concern. To be called that the Apropia is doing an international wrongful act because Apropia uh, are not linked to the international wrongful act character, Your Excellency. And here, uh, in this case, that Apropria doing a preemptive action in order to to the principle of self defense and uh, it's not whether Apropria should do the maintain airways aircraft and to pre 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 pretend from the use of force. Apropria did not any kind of international wrongful acts or offenses. And I stated before that in, in an international wrongful acts will be happen in. There, there, there must be an internationally wrongful act, just like violation of international law. And secondly, such a violation results in international responsibility. And in this case, regarding to the maintain airways aircraft, Apropria did not violate international law because Apropria has their fully sovereignty uh, to protect their citizens and also in the preemptive action of self-defense responses. And Apropria action did not link to the State responsibility and regarding to the international wrongful act references. May I continue references? If it's if Afropria is not, uh, there is nothing to deal with the international wrongful acts. Then how and how the circumstances of the conduct uh, process of the case between Afropria and yeah, between two other countries and how both countries are responsible for these cases then? Your Excellency, as before, that Apropria has already doing an investigation under the ILSA, ILSA to doing an investigation regarding to the maintenance airways aircraft, Your Excellency. And both Apropria and Danov Tayo has already doing an uh, doing an investigation under the ILSA and this action show that the Apropria is already responsible to their domestic uh, problem regarding to the maintenance airways aircraft. And this dispute are not, should not be bring to the, but under the International Court of Justice because Apropria as a country has already doing a good faith to the maintenance airways aircraft Accident, Your Excellency. And it can be uh, more eligible that the maintenance airways aircraft are just, are just, uh, are just, and investigated by the Apropria and then under the ICLSA, Your Excellency. May I continue, Your Excellency? Yes, please. And Your Excellency, that Apropria has the human rights to protect the appropriate nationality from the threat of the FOGS tax, your Excellencies. This is inherent with the Article 3 
the, under the UDHR, they stated that everyone, everyone has the right to live, liberty and security of person. That hint, the aircraft failed to respond any kind of the communication from the appropriate fight, jet fighter airplane fifth. And if the appropriate did not shooting down the aircraft, this aircraft will will flying near of the capital city of appropriate. And it should be a bomb laden stable airplane as a weapon on national capital city of Apapulia here as And this action is clearly violated the human rights under the UDHR of the Apapulia Apapulia uh, civil, civilian residences. And for the second main point regarding Apapulia comply to the international procedure of the international civil aviation residences. The maintain airways aircraft was flying illegally near the capital city of Apreplia. And as the result, Apreplia authorities of the Air Force need to take an action to shoot down the maintain airways aircraft. Because it's not just uh, an assumption of the Apreplia, because in because the maintain airways aircraft was flying illegally and there are an hijacking activities or in a spy mission inside the maintain airways aircraft, your excellencies. And this case are similar with the Korean airline flight 102 that operating with a Boeing 707 aircraft, aircraft will en route from Paris, France to Seoul. That South Korea with a stopover for refuse, uh, refueling in, in Anchorage, Alaska, your excellencies. And this aircraft uh, should done by the Soviet Union that claim that they believe the aircraft was an a spy mission and after quickly returning the passenger. It was a matter of defense of its national security interest in maintaining of secrecy of its secret air base, your excellencies, and state have a right to anticipatory or preemptive self-defense uh, regarding to the unscheduled or the illegally aircraft flying over their airspace, your excellencies. And also a state killing is legal for it required to protect our life. And there is no other means such a capture or non lethal uh, incapacitate your excellencies. And here, there is no choice to appropriate to shoot down the aircraft, which the aircraft was, placed, was uh, flying almost near capital city and into the government's building of appropriate. And the pilot of the second aircraft has refused instruction to land but in which the ferry survival of a state would be a stake and the maintain airways pilot did not respond anything to the jet, fi jet fighter of the Apropria military authorities, your excellencies. And in this case, it could be assumed that the maintain airways aircraft are uh, doing an attack to Apropria nationality. And Apropria also has uh, complied to the standard operating procedures because Apropria has already send the PCL code to the maintain airways aircraft. But as the result that the maintain airways aircraft was uh, shoot down and crash into the territory of Apropria, your excellencies. And for going reasons, the applicants, uh, the applicants say it asked to the court to declare and adjudge that the court may not have jurisdiction over the maintain airways aircraft because the maintain airways aircraft are fully domestic jurisdiction of Apropria. And even if the court were to exercise jurisdiction, Apropria did not violate the national law by shooting the app. Thank you, Your Excellency. Is anyone talking? Uh, yes, Your Excellencies. Uh, sorry, but uh, in my home, uh, didn't have an internet access, so I go outside uh, my home. I will continue to my uh, presentation. Mbak, suaranya clear nggak, Mbak? Jelas, jelas. Okay. 
Okay. Very good afternoon, Your Excellencies, Madam President Sela and Judge Ari Wiryadinata, agent of Apepria and the audience. Mr. President and judges, my name is Aribi Fajari Furkon. It is such an honor to stand in this virtual court pleading to represent the President of State of Pranostayo as respondent in the present case concerning Jeffit Aiden pandemic. I will be delivering the first and second part of the respondent submission in the next 21 minutes. And my co-agent and Yusuf Akbar will deliver the third and fourth part of respondent submission for 21 minutes. And we also reserve three minutes for sure battle. If you don't mind about the structure, may it please the court. Your Excellencies, the first submission is regarding to Ranostayo didn't violate international law by applying its entry regulation to Apepuya. And even if it did, it should not be required Apepuya for any claim economic uses. There are three main arguments proving that Ranostayo didn't violate international law. The first, Ranostayo didn't violate international law regarding to the state sovereignty of Ranostayo to apply the entry regulation. And second, Ranostayo didn't violate international law by applying its entry regulation to Apeplia according to the fundamental rights of person. And the third, Ranostayo has no obligation to compensate the economic losses. Now, with the court permission, I will turn to my very first argument regarding to Ranostayo didn't violate international law because it was a state sovereignty of Ranostayo to apply the entry regulation. Your Excellencies, the was confirmed case of COVID-18 pandemic in Apepuya had appeared from the NBL on 10 April 2018. Apepuya didn't report the suspect person and failed to handle it. Hence, in order to protect Ranostayo territory from that virus, Ranostayo made the entry regulation which include the list of high-risk country where Apropia was added to that list because the failure of handling that virus in the NBL and the travel restriction as the public deserves and interest of Ranostayo. As a global community, Ranostayo cannot continue to ignore the acts of Apropia to fail handling that virus. It must consider that Ranostayo didn't violate international law to obey the obligation of the state to protect citizens from any kind of virus. Your Excellencies, the characteristics of the land of sovereign state is a competence exclusivity of the state regarding their own territory. The sovereignty of state is the same as the land and their airspace regarding to the Article 3 of the Montevideo Convention. And I quote, the political existence of the state is independent of recognizing by, uh, by the other states. Your Excellencies, from that article, Ranostayo has the rights and full sovereignty about how they want to regulate their country based on the regulation, as it fits for the interest and safety of their people. And this is what actually Ranostayo did regarding to the end regulation. It was for the safety of the Ranostayan. The hasty stance of recommend any restriction on international travel must be understandable, given the available evidence on the impact and long history of such measure been taken with a little scientific justification. With the travel ban, it may introduce potentially effective travel restriction to the goal of the international health regulation to prevent the spread of public health trade. It's reflect in the emergency health of Ebola virus on 2014 until 2016, the travel ban was legally dead as Australia became the first country to restrict the travel from the three West African countries. At the centers of the outbreak, that the act was lawful under international law. Your Excellencies, each state has the right to make any regulation depend on their needs of nation as good maintain and a capable state to make handle what they have to do in their territory. This, all, this statement also supported by the domain reserve doctrine declared by Austin Hobbes 
where the state has jurisdiction to do in their capacity and free from the obligation and regulation under international law. It also emphasized under Article 13 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in order what happened on the internal state, it's a domestic affairs of the state itself. Also strengthened, also strengthened under Article 1 of the Chicago Convention emphasized about the exclusivity of sovereign state that every country has the rights to close off the airspace above its territory from the commercial efforts carried out by foreign countries. Your Excellency Ranosayo concludes, Ranosayo has the right to do what they have to do in their territory as long as the desires and the interests of Ranosayo. Whereas Ranosayo wants to prevent the Javid Aden virus to the entry the state and especially to all Ranosayan both inside and outside Ranosayo state. The principle of protection is carried out by Ranosayo as an exercise of Ranosayo jurisdiction on the basis of the protecting the vital interests of the state. Your Excellency, moving to my second argument. Uh, before we move to second arguments, I would like to ask further about the conditions of other countries, like what the other countries that are under your list of uh you know it's not only up it's not only appropriate that ex that you put in the uh abundant countries to visit your places right so if rhino stavio applied the regulation willing uh dealing with other countries so which party that bears the burden of proof and how many countries that sue appropriate regulation on this case Yes, Your Excellencies, I do understand your concern regarding to the country that uh, that adopted our entry regulation during the Javid Aden pandemic. There are uh, there were twenty four country adopted our entry regulation, Your Excellencies. And what's the parameter of the state that uh, comply with our entry regulation? It is uh, in our entry regulation uh, under Section Three. Uh, it. Uh, it uh, regulates that our high risk country list is maintained by our government in our official website and uh, uh, by the scientific evidence, Your Excellency. It also laid down uh, in the statement of fact 14, if uh, I'm not mistaken. And also, Your Excellency, when the state is uh, have a minimum cases, 50, 50 minimum cases of David Aden in the territorial of the state itself, it must automatically apply to our regulation, our entry regulation without up, update uh, in our website list itself, Your Excellency. May I continue? Uh, I surely understand about your concerns and putting the list on that. But my question is that, is that only Iran of Sayo that is uh, concerns on your regulations because they feel like they are uh economically violated or is there any kind of countries that have a similar issue like Rano Stayo that pursue that sue your that sue your country to you know create any uh you know to create any issues for this yes your excellencies uh uh yes your excellencies during the jfit aiden uh pandemic uh, the other four, 24 countries has adopted our entry regulation as per, and your excellencies in the other uh, in the other state practice and the other emergency health situation like uh, Ebola virus on 2014 uh, Australia adopt uh, adopt the entry regulation uh, or apply the the entry restriction to the African state that uh, uh, that has a uh, that has a outbreak uh, of uh, the Ebola itself, and during the Japan Aden pandemic, uh, your Excellencies, the Japanese and Aust and uh, Singapore uh, adopted this uh, travel restriction uh, in the beginning of COVID uh, COVID nineteen to prevent the COVID nineteen enter the territorial uh, the territorial the territorial of the state, and also your Excellencies to the 
previous cases that I, I mentioned before, there were no uh, sanction or there were no uh, there were no uh, international wrongful wrongful act made by the other state that I mentioned before, and there there were no compensation of economic losses to the other country during a pandemic uh, during a pandemic. Your Excellencies, may I continue? Yes, please. Yes, Your Excellency is moving to my second argument. Ranosayu didn't violate international law by applying its anti regulation to Apepuya according to the fundamental rights of person. Your Excellency, the anti regulation is reflected of Ranosayu's state sovereignty to protect Ranosayan. Under Article 25, Paragraph 1 in Declaration of Human Rights, I quote, everyone has the rights to a standard living educate for the health. What Ranosayo did in the very state, uh, according to the duties as a country in a global pandemic, is to protect Ranostayan or non Ranostayan in a classical tradition identified the absolute rights of individual as the rights of personal security, personal liberty, and pro and proper and uh, what uh, was defined as a person and uninterrupted enjoyment uh, of their life their limbs and their body and their health and their reputation. Ranostayo want everyone feel security, especially in health uh, aspect. A core, uh, and it also drawn by the Salus Populi Suprama Lex Esto principle. Uh, it uh, stipulates that the safety of the people is the highest law and also it laid down under Article 9B of the Chicago Convention that I quote, Set a during period of emergency of in the interest of the state of, of uh, public safety with immediate effect temporarily to restrict or prohibit flying over the whole or any part of its territory. Your Excellencies, may I move to my uh, second submission regarding to Ranusayo didn't violate international law by refusing to hand over Ms. Kenba Formun to appropriate authorities. Your Excellencies, there are three main before arguments forward, proving that. Before moving forward to the next uh, argumentations, I would like to know if that do all the norms uh, do all the norms uh, are all the norms applied in the Universal Declarations of Human Rights represent the customary law in every country, especially in Arabia, and if it's applied what parts or what element that represents the customary law of Apepuya? Yes, Your Excellencies, regarding to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, yes, Your Excellencies, it reflected the customary international law because, because uh, there were, uh, because this, uh, this uh, regulation or this term is accepted by, by the states and uh, use uh, and, and and used by the International Court of Justice. Also, this uh, this uh, also this uh, this terms is uh, reflected of the of the accepted by the other states, like I said before, your Excellencies. Your Excellencies. Your Excellencies, may yes. I continue? Yes, please. Sure, thank you. Yes, Your Excellencies, moving to the next submission regarding to Ranus Sayu didn't violate international law by refusing to hand over Ms. Kenba for Moon to appropriate authorities. There are three main arguments proving that Ranus Sayu didn't violate international law. The first, extradition law prohibit Ranus Sayu to hand over Ms. Kenba for Moon to appropriate from her political offense. And second, the human rights of Ms. Kemba Foreman was protected by international law. And the third, Ms. Kemba Foreman information protects public interest. Your Excellencies, Ms. Kemba Foreman is appropriate national born and raised in Segura province. She is the NBL member and signed the NBL non-disclosure agreement on 10 April 2018. May I introduce you what the NBL is? 
The NBL is a public laboratory handling by the government of Apriya and a public uh, that are uh, maintained by the Apriya uh, authorities itself. Your Excellencies, uh, I will continue. On 3 June 2018, Ms. Kenba Foreman sent the information of disclosure about the Javid Aden cases in Apriya. By the Twitter account, secret the government of Apriya keep denying about the cases that already exist. According to her post, the Apriyan police chased her and she drove through the front gates of uh, Ranustayo's consulate in Segura province. At that time, the consul agreed to let she stay in unused room in the consulate building and become an asylum seeker of Ranustayo. I will proceed to my very first argument regarding political offense of Ms. Kenba Foreman inhibited her extradition to Apriyan authorities. The act of Ms. Kenba Foreman was categorized as a political offense since she against the government of Apriya through her Twitter, prejudice her state system of information of Javid Aden. The cases of Javid Aden in Apriya was hired by the government in Segura province, so Ms. Kenba Foreman against the government to say the truth about the cases of Javid Aden. And also, she against the government by didn't obey the agreements between employers and NBL about non-disclosure agreements. Your Excellency, extradition cannot apply by the act of political offense according to the Article 33.1 of the Convention and Protocol relating to the status of refugee and customary international law. In that article, I quote, no contracting state shall expel or return a refugee in any manner whatsoever to the frontiers of territories where his life or freedom will be threat on account of his political opinion. Your Excellencies, both Apriya and Ranostayo are the parties of this convention, and thereafter, neither Apriya and Ranostayo have the reservation about the terms of Article 33.1. Uh, before going to the next uh, argumentations, I would like to ask you, are your finding of facts in order about the political uh, political interests that you mentioned before are legitimately illegal? And is there any political statement officially coming from both countries about this issue? Or it's just like an assumption from your statement about the political interests that you mentioned? Yes, Your Excellencies, I do understand your concern. Uh, based on the statement of fact, yes, Your Excellencies, this is not our assumption about the about the act of Miss Kenba for Moon. Uh, we view that the act of Miss Kenba for Moon was categorized as a political offense since against the government of of the of the Apriya itself. And also, Your Excellencies, we already communicate to the to the Apriya authorities or Apriya government. They said that the act of Miss Kenba for Moon was categorized as a domestic uh, domestic uh, do, domestic criminal code to Apriya. But in our view, Your Excellencies, this is a uh, it, uh, it's impossible to say that uh, disclose the secret uh, about the health uh, from the NBL was categorized as a, as a domestic uh, criminal from the Apriplian itself, your excellencies. May I continue? Understood, yes, please. Yes, your excellencies. Uh, reg uh, regarding to the model treaty on extradition adopted by General Assembly Resolution 45 under Article 3, mandatory grounds for refusal extradition to the political offense, and if the request that has substantial grounds for believing that the request for extradition has been made for the purpose of persecution or punishing a person on account of the race, religion, nationality, ethnic origin, and political opinions. Ms. Kenba Foreman, who did the political offense, must be not handed over to Apepuya by the Ran of Sayo because according to, to this regulation, Ran of Sayo cannot expel her and she cannot be returned to Apepuya. Thus, Ran of Sayo, as a state respect to the international law, protects uh, her life from the prosecution of Apepuya. Your Excellencies, moving to the next argument, uh, 
uh, the human rights of Miss Kemba Formon was protected by international law under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 2 and Article 3 about the rights to life and security of person. And moreover, under Article 14, regulates about the rights to seek and enjoy in another country asylum from the prescription. As a person, Miss Kemba of Formon has the right to enjoy the, asyl the asylum from the Ranosayo as long as Ranosayo accepts and protects her from the Apreptuya. Your Excellencies, for the foregoing reason, respondent respectfully request to the court that winds it waiver to a judge and declare that Ranosayo didn't violate international law by applying its entry regulation to Apreptuya and even if it did, it should not be required appropriate for any claim of economic losses. And Rana Sayo didn't violate international law by refusing to hand over Miss Kenba Formun to the appropriate authorities. Thank you, Your Excellencies. Thank you. Okay, uh, very good uh, afternoon, Your Excellencies and the agent of the United uh, Republic of Apreprua. My name is M. Yusuf Akbar. It is the honor to appear before this court, representing on behalf of the democratic state of Ranam Stayo, as respondent in this case concerning the JFID-18 pandemic between Apreprua and Ranam Stayo, where I will speak for the next 21 minutes, and I will be addressing our third and fourth submissions regarding to the court may exercise jurisdictions of Ranam Stai counterclaim concerning the maintenance Airways aircraft and Apreplia violated international law by shooting down the aircraft. Your Excellencies, with your permissions, I will begin to deliver from our church missions and may it please the court. Uh, your Excellencies, the problem emerged when Ms. Furman, who already an applicant for our asylum seeker to run up style, is intended to manage to get away from the territory of Upper Puya. But in the process, Your Excellencies, her airplane was shipped down by the Air Force of Upper Puya. The reasons to do that is because they believe that airplane was used for committing terrorist actions. But it turns out your excellencies from the recording crash of the airplane, and we can conclude from the conversation between Ms. Furman and Ms. Wei, they both never intended to use that airplane for terrorist actions rather than they only want to get away from the airspace of Apropluya. Because of this, your excellencies, we declare that in our third submissions, the court may exercise jurisdictions of a random style counterclaim concerning the maintenance aircraft, where your excellencies in these submissions consist of two main arguments, where in the first argument, the court has jurisdictions under Article 36 Statute of the International Court of Justice. And in the second argument, the court has jurisdictions of a random style interest on the counterclaim. In our first argument, the court has jurisdictions under Article 36 Statute of the International Court of Justice, where under Article 36 Paragraph 1 Statute of the Court, I quote here, this the jurisdictions of the court comprises all cases which the parties refer to it and all matters specially provided for it in the Charter of the United Nations or in the treaties and conventions enforced, unquote, where your excellencies based on the statement of fact on 17 August of 2020, both Apropuya and Anabstayo agree to have this dispute to proceed in the International Court of Justice. And this is already fulfilled based on the criteria according to the Article 36, Paragraph 1 State of the court. Moreover, your excellencies, the court may also be granted jurisdictions of a dispute arising from international treaty where such treaties contain a compromisory clause. Providing for this, in fact, your excellencies, quite a large number of international treaties, both bilateral and multilateral, do include a clause awarding the ICG jurisdiction with respect to the question that might arise from the interpretations and applications of the agreement. 
Moreover, the court has jurisdictions based on the declarations of April Buya and Ranap Stayo on 7 January 2002 and March 2003, where April Buya and Ranap Stayo at that time, Your Excellency, had respectively deposit declarations with the Secretary General of the United Nations under Article 36, Paragraph 2 of the Statute of the ICG, both declare that accepting ICG jurisdictions as compulsory ipso facto and without special agreement. Your Excellency, if the court does not have jurisdictions because of a reservations, it may still have jurisdictions that, based on another basis, a limitations on the court jurisdictions under a compromisory clause, but not in a declaration, does not affect the declaration itself. Article 93, paragraph 1 of the Charter of the United Nations provide that, I quote, all members of the United Nations are ipso facto parties to the Statute of the International Court of Justice. Moreover, in the Article 36, paragraph 2 of the court also has jurisdictions regarding to legal dispute concerning the interpretations of a treaty, any question of international law, the existence of any fact which, if established, will constitute a breach of an international obligations, and the nature or extent of the reparations to be made for the breach of an international obligations. It invoked its own acceptance of the jurisdictions of the court under the optional clause of Article 36, Paragraph 2 of the Statute. The Article 36, Paragraph 2 represented whether it is decided that the court has jurisdiction in relations to a particular dispute or not, the parties in all cases remain responsible for acts attributable to those who violate the rights of other countries. Your Excellencies, Your Excellencies the court also has competence to determine the meaning of its own jurisdictions and interpret the term of the relevant compromise or the relevant treaty or declarations it deems appropriate in these circumstances. The court discussed the nature of such declarations in the Cameroon v. Nigeria with the preliminary objection case and state that, Your Excellencies, I quote, any state party to the statute in adhering to the jurisdictions of the court in accordance with Article 36, Paragraph 2, accept jurisdictions in its relations with state previously having adhered to that clause. At the same time, it makes a standing over to the other state parties to the statute which have not yet deposit a declaration of acceptance. The day one of the states accept that over by depositing in its turn its declaration of acceptance, the consensual bond is established and no further conditions need to be met. Declaration for- um, yes. um, I would like to ask if like what credence should the ICG assign to finding effects met by the national law in this case and that in which circumstances uh, and to what extent that should ICJ uh, defer to national court because it's also dealing with the appropriate national uh, regulations and national proceedings, right? So what, should, what credence should ICJ do for this? And in what extent should ICJ do for the national court itself? Yes, Your Excellency, regarding to the extent of the ICG jurisdictions, uh, Your Excellency, the ICG eventually, we believe that in this case, can eventually exercise their jurisdictions regarding to the Apripluya uh, jurisdictions. Because why, Your Excellency, as I mentioned that before, the court can also uh, determine its own jurisdictions because, Your Excellency, Judge Ferstein state that the court should have a act by own initiative to determine its own jurisdictions. For example, in the case of Democratic Republic of Congo v. Uganda, the court did award professional measures regarding to interpret its own jurisdictions, especially in this case here, Excellencies, in the case of the legality of using of force, uh, in the case of Yugoslavia, the court still have some jurisdictions, even though that Yugoslavia have some reservations, eventually, the court can have exercise jurisdiction in the case of the, the in that involving the use of force. While believe while we believe that Apripulia actions towards shooting down the maintenance oasis indeed involving the use of force because of this your actions, any reservations can be breached by the ICG jurisdictions without thinking about the jurisdictions of the Apripulia itself because in this case involving the use of force. And when the case involving the use of force, the ICG sometimes can 
uh, break through the jurisdictions of the national court in order to keep international security and peace so that the ICG can have exercise its jurisdiction, Your Excellencies. May I proceed, Your Excellencies? Uh, before moving forward, can objections to jurisdictions be considered by the ICG, ICJ for this? Yes, like, does the same apply to the admin admissions objections? It's not only about the, you know, a criminal actions, but also the admissions uh, regulations, if you know what I mean, like. Uh, regarding to the uh, admission of your jurisdictions, uh, I believe that uh, your excellencies uh, eventually uh, the case of maintain airways is already fulfilled based on the article 36 paragraph 1 and 36 paragraph 2. So your excellencies, uh, this court can exercise its uh, jurisdictions because we believe that appropriate fulfilled the criteria article 36 paragraph 1 uh, because Apriplia already pre, uh, declared and accepting ICG jurisdiction on the 17th August of 2020 to agree to proceed uh, in this uh, proceeding. The, that, that's why we believe that eventually this court can exercise its jurisdictions, Your Excellencies. May I continue, Your Excellencies? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Excellencies. <clears throat> well, moving to my mm. second argument. Uh, the court has jurisdictions of an abstire interest on the counterclaim because Apropria has violated international law by shooting down the maintain airways. Uh, the action of shooting down the maintain airways are violated the Chicago Conventions on Article 3 bis A, where it states that each state must refrain from using weapons against civilian aircraft. So, moreover, your essence is the Apropria actions on shooting down the maintain airways. Aircraft also violated Article 2, Paragraph 4 of the Charter of Indonesians as state that prohibit all the use of force and in the Article 1 state that every internationally wrongfully act of a state entail the international responsibility of that state. So your excellencies, uh, to conclude in our third submissions, appropriate actions towards shooting down the maintain airways aircraft is indeed violated international law, especially in the Chicago Conventions on Article 3 bis A and Article 2, Paragraph 4 of the United Nations Charter. And also considering the fact that Ms. Furman, which is one of our applicants for asylum, is also our interest and appropriate actions for shooting down the aircraft is absolutely fall under the decisions of the court. Uh, moving to our fourth submissions regarding to Apriplia. I would like to ask that are there finding effects about uh, the aircraft itself made by international tribunals or is it the findings of facts made by national courts or is there any like a third parties that uh, do the investigation for that? Okay. Yes, yes. Your Excellencies, regarding to the investigations of the press, yes, to, based on the statement of fact, Your Excellencies, that Apriplia uh, uh, already asked for the international independent organizations like ICAO to conclude the investigations of the press of the maintain airways. Uh, it is concluded that, where based on the statement of fact, that uh, from the conversations of the crash airplane, ICAO conclude that. Ms. Furman and Ms. Wei never intended to use that uh, for terrorist actions. So your excellencies, because of this, your excellencies, from the ICAO conclusions, that's why we believe that uh, Apriplia violated international law for shooting down that aircraft. Because your excellencies, uh, there, there, there is a case that uh, many international society uh, condemn all the use of weapons against civilian aircraft because it is incompatible of the, the consideration of humanity of that person itself, your excellencies. Moreover, that it is involved the civilian aircraft. So that's why we believe that in our proceeding that Apropulia has already violated international law, especially in the Chicago Convention Article 3 bis A. And even though that uh, Apropulia still managed to investigate that aircraft by using the ICAO as what regulate in the Chicago Convention, they still must be uh, responsible for what they did, Your Excellencies. May I continue, Your Excellencies? Sure, please. Yes. 
Your chances in our first mission, uh, we will be delivering you two arguments. Where in the first argument, a propulia is violated international law for shooting or maintain airways, and in the second argument, the right to life of every person on board of the maintain airways. Your Excellencies, a propulia is violated international law for shooting on the maintain airways because there are prohibitions of using air forces against civil and aircraft. Your Excellencies, the prohibitions of armed forces against civil aircraft follows an international norm where until the 1928 the use of force was a natural component of the state sovereignty. That year the Kellogg Bryan Pact became the first conventions to establish the non-use of force as principle regulating international rule uh, relations, a rule that taken up by the Charter of the United Nations and upheld by the International Court of Justice. Most of the legal theory does consider that the non-use of weapons as preemptory norm of international law also called use Kogan. This principle has an impact on a civil aviation to the extent that a state may not use armed forces against a commercial aircraft. Your Excellency is also that the United Nations General Assembly took up the conventions to by asking all states to take the necessary step to avoid incidents involving attacks on civil aircraft that accidentally stray from their fixed route. Similarly, the International Civil Aviation Organization or ICAO on several occasions has upheld the principle of protecting civil aircraft. The assembly, I quote your exercises, condemns all acts of violence which may be directed against aircraft, aircraft crews, and passengers engaged in the international air transport, unquote. Also, your Excellency, the United Nations Security Council resolutions number 1067, I quote, condemns the use of weapons against civil aircraft in flight as being incompatible with elementary considerations of humanity, the rule of customary international law as codified in the Addendum Article 3 of the Chicago Convention, unquote. Additionally, your excellencies, in order to make the principle of non-use of weapons more effective, uh, the Chicago Conventions provide for launching an investigations in the case of the destruction of civil aircraft. Although your Excellency is based on the statement of fact that Apripulia still managed to investigate the crash of the maintained airways, but the recording of the plane shown that the passenger of the maintained airways is clearly not intended to use their aircraft as terrorist actions, rather than just want to get out from the Apripulia airspace. Uh, this is clearly degrading of the human right of the person in board and the actions that was took by Apripulia as frivolous. Uh, moving to my second sub-point argument, uh, the use of little force against maintained airways is excessive. Your Excellencies, allow me to tell you why the use of little force against maintained airways is excessive, because there is comparison case regarding to these issues, where the most significant of this are the brother to the rescue case in which Cuban forces shut down a small civilian plane that had allegedly violated Cuban airspace and the case of the Nachova v Bulgaria in which person were absent without leave from the army was shot while trying to escape. Your Excellencies, this case did not concern events in situations of armed conflict and in the situation of peaceful time. So this principle, this proportionality principle will apply at all times and relevant. Uh, the finding that the use of lethal force was excessive was explained in the Nachova case judgment in the following terms, I quote, there can be no necessity to put human life at risk where it is known that the person to be arrested possess no threat to life and limb, and even if a failure to use lethal force may result in the opportunity to arrest the fugitive being lost, unquote. So your excellency is moreover that maintain airways is a civilian aircraft, not a state aircraft, and it must be considered as a non-threat, even if Apripulia deem as a threat to their nations, Apripulia only play based on their assumptions. Such assumptions is danger in the case when the lack of evidence. Also, international law never universally accepted to recognize based on the preemptive attack and thus Apripulia actions to use lethal force is excessive and must be responsible at all costs. Uh, to conclude, yes, sure. Uh, wait, talking about the evidence about the case in itself, so what is the standard of proof uh, required by international law? Like what, you know, what is the considerations in the circumstances of the resources 
that allow the evidence is uh, used in international courts or ICJ itself. Yes, your excellency is regarding to what evidence and let's just say why we can say that uh, Prepulia valid international law. Uh, your excellency is based on the Article 15 of the state of the court uh, of the court. It states that this court can ask an expert opinion regarding to their case of handling. So this court can ask of evidence from the International Convention uh, or from the ICAO to conclude that their investigations regarding to the crash airplane, especially in this case, can involve the ILSA, your excellencies, where the ILSA is the main figure to, in, uh, for, to investigate the crash of the uh, maintain areas of Prepulia. So, your excellency, eventually, this court can have evidence from the ILSA based on the Article 15 of the court uh, statute, your excellencies. Uh, moreover, that your excellencies, uh, even uh, uh, we can also see from the statement of Philip Alston that state that anyone from a target killing in a law enforcement context cannot be acceptable. While we believe that appropriate actions for shooting down maintain airways is the cause of the law enforcement context of appropriate itself. So we believe that appropriate has contrary to the uh, international society and international customer for shooting down the aircraft your excellencies. May I continue your excellencies? Yes. Thank you, Your Excellencies. Uh, your Excellencies, uh, Ms. Perman and Ms. Xie is the victim of the term security like the term terrorism. It's one that brings with it both theoretical uncertainties and considerable emotional baggage. And one must avoid allowing the use of broad terms such as security to cloud our understanding of the substance of state duty in respect of the individual right to life in a purely law enforcement context. These duties are not significantly different in the context of the terrorist threat to the security from what they are in the normal times. Their content must always be considered in the context of not of labels, but rather of particular fact of situations. The point to be made here is that your excellencies, it is the only in the context of protecting select right that the state deprivation of life may even be contemplated. Ms. Furman and Ms. Way life must be protected at very force. They both are the victim of previous label of the term terrorism. Therefore, your excellencies, Apropulia must be responsible for their actions. And in our prayer for relief, the court may exercise jurisdictions of an abstain counterclaim concerning the maintenance of aircraft and Apropulia violated international law by shooting on the aircraft. Thank you, your excellencies. Pakai ribatel nggak ini apa sel? Hmm, sorry gimana? Mau pakai ribatel suri batel tiga menit atau mau kasih komen langsung? Uh, ribatel boleh. Oke okay, kita coba ya berarti uh, di set dong waktunya. I call the the agent or the representative of the applicant to deliver uh, to deliver the ribatel to the applicant representative from Indonesia. Very good afternoon, Your Excellencies, Mr. President and the judges. Here, to rebate the respondent side, we provide three main points regarding to our rebuttal. First, appropriately, government did not hit any case to update virus at all. This clearly miscommunicated between appropriately authorities with the director of the NBL. And what is the that establish in the laboratory so that appropriate itself cannot investigate indirectly your offenses. Also, appropriate did not get a valid result yet of virus about the handling of COVID-18 in the NBL. Our, every state has different interests and the way to take care of this virus. 
and appropriate follow the WHO recommendation by applying the public advice that include social distancing, use mask, and always wash uh, hands before after to do something your experiences. And whoever an obstacle has the sovereignty of the uh, use the use the regulation to the appropriate, but based on the state sovereignty, a state also has their limited limited sovereignty over the another state your excellencies and appropriate has their own sovereignty also and did not interfere the run of styles action by applying its reg regulation to appropriate. And your excellencies for the second that the Mrs. Kemba former are not fit to be called as refugee or asylum seeker, your, your excellencies. And in this case, that Mrs. Kemba former are the real fugitive of the appropriate national uh, law, your excellencies. And for the third, that whoever appropriate and Sayo already deposited the declaration on 7 January 2002 and 10 March 2003, Apropria has respectively deposited with the Secretary General of the United Nations under the reservation of the Article 21 the Vienna Convention, Your Excellencies. And the International Court of Justice has no jurisdiction over the run of Sayo counterclaim based on this reservation. And also, if the court were to exercise jurisdiction regarding to the maintain airways aircraft, Apropria did not violate international law because Apropria already comply to the all standard operating procedures regarding to the maintenance airways aircraft. And APREPLIA also has the sovereignty, uh, sovereignty over their airspace in order to take action the shooting of the maintenance aircraft, your excellencies. And APREPLIA did not violate international law by shooting down the aircraft. Thank you. Well, I call the agent of respondent to deliver the uh, the, the story battle to the respondent representative time is yours. Okay, thank you for the time, your excellencies. Uh, regarding to the statement of the Apropria did not hide the virus, we intended to respectfully disagree because why we believe that Apropria is actually indeed hide the viruses because from the statement of the Miss Perman who come to us in our consulate, she, she told to us that her boss intended to secret the possible of the outbreak in the NBA laboratory of itself. From that statement, we conclude that Apropria tend to keep the secret of the virus, especially in the Segura province. And regarding to the next statement from the agent of Apropria that Ms. Kimbar Furman are not fit to be called as asylum seeker and are the real fugitive, we intended also to disagree and respectfully disagree because why Ms. Kimbra Furman is actually fit to be called for asylum seeker because why in order to fit to be called of the asylum seeker, it is it is fulfilled based on the threat fulfill of the threat or feel of the unsafety from the person itself. While we believe that when Ms. Furman comes to us, she feel that her life has been threatened because of this there's also rule of international law that regulate a person not is not to be refoulement or non-refoulement principle according to the article 33 paragraph one of the convention on the status of refugee because of this we actually uh, do our obligations to protect the life of miss perman from the possible persecutions based on their race religion and etc and regarding to that appropriate reservations because of the reservation, the ICG has no reservation. We respectfully also disagree because why uh, uh, this court can eventually can exercise its own jurisdiction even though there are reservations made from Apropria because why in the case of the legality of use of force in order to keep international peace and security, this court pro can exercise its own jurisdictions example in the case of the Yugoslavia against the NATO community member and the next statement made by the agent of Apropria it stated that Apropria did not violate the international law for shooting the aircraft while we believe that Apropria is actually violated international law for shooting on the aircraft because it is violated article 3 bsh Czech convention and it is contrary to the common practice of made by state regarding the protecting of a civilian aircraft and especially in the case of the Nacho Fafi Bulgaria as I mentioned that 
every person must not be arbitrarily deprived of life, even though that person can be uh, escaped from the uh, the case of the from the chase of the authority. So in the end, that the life of Miss Perman and Miss Wei is must be protected at all costs and not should not be arbitrary deprivation of life. Thank you, Excellencies. Okay, thank you. Silakan Sel untuk over all komentarnya dan satu-satu per. Hmm, sorry, yang terakhir apa tadi? Udah, udah uh, selesai. Tinggal enggak, komentar. Yang komentar aja kan? Komentar dan ya, masukan untuk masing-masing dan cover all. Oh, oke. Okay. Give me one minute, please. Uh, okay, so um, thank you so much for everyone uh, for inviting me again for the second practice for the Sub. So I would like to extend two clarifications so far. The first one is overview, like the general overview of uh, of the Sub practice today and the second thing like like individual review that might be helping you to get better for the oral section. Jadi yang pertama adalah general overview 